any advice, any tips for any introverts out there who want to become product managers, but they're a little bit afraid that because of all the conversations, all the meetings, they won't be able to? Yeah. I, first of all, don't be afraid. Um, some of the smartest, most capable product managers that I have ever met and have been deeply influenced by have certainly been introverted people. Uh, I think it, I, I've mentioned the word boundaries a lot in our conversation, Diego, and I, I think I can't emphasize that enough. Being willing and able to set reasonable boundaries for yourself about when you're going to work, uh, when you're going to engage in meetings, when you're going to stop working. Uh, having those boundaries in place is invaluable to preserve your sanity and to make sure that, that you're able to perform at your very best. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Diego Granados and I'm a product manager. And today I have a special guest with us. I have Rob Hall, uh, who is a senior director of product, a digital scientist and host of the Experience Lab podcast. Rob, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you? How's everything going? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me, Diego. That's awesome. Thank you for being here. And uh, for the audience out there, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a senior director of product, uh, head of product at Digital Scientists, and uh, we're a small agency uh, located just outside of the Atlanta, Georgia area. Um, and I help lead our team of product managers and uh, our organizations full of PMs and designers and engineers that work together to build uh, digital products and machine learning enabled services, uh, typically for companies that uh, need an experienced team that can help them move faster and, and get new things to market quickly. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, how did you get into product management and, and why did you actually decide to get into PM? That's such a good question because uh, I think like many product managers, I took the scenic route uh, to get here. I certainly did not study product management in college. I didn't study uh, product management after college. Uh, I kind of came to it accidentally in some ways. Um, and so my, my background is actually in music education. Uh, I studied music uh, in college, uh, also studied film production. Um, so I, I have a, a, a bit of a creative background. Um, also spent uh, some time after college uh, doing IT work, uh, largely in the construction industry. Um, so I was working for a startup uh, in, uh, say it was around 2008, 2009, uh, in the multifamily industry uh, right before the recession. And so that uh, opportunity is really where I cut my teeth uh, in helping build a service and taking it to market. And, and so I was, I was kind of doing product management work and product strategy work without knowing it at the time. Um, the recession hit, I ended up losing the job. Uh, the, the startup failed, unfortunately, uh, like many others did at the time. And I kind of had to go back to basics and, and rethink what, what's my skill set? What are things that I'm good at? What, what can I do to provide for my family? Um, and, and so I ended up going all the way back even further to my time as a child. So uh, in elementary school, I taught myself how to program with basic uh, and something called HyperCard. But if you're a, an Apple fan, fan nerd, uh, you'll remember from the mid nineties or early nineties even. Um, it was <clears throat> a very early visual programming tool. In the late 90s, I, I taught myself HTML uh, and I built my first web page on AngelFire and uh, worked with GeoCities <laughs> a whole long time ago. Uh, so, I, And I was the first kid that I knew uh, in elementary school that I had an email address. Um, so I was totally a nerd as a kid. Um, and when I, when I recalled that skill set and dusted it off, um, I realized, wait, there's actually a demand for these skills. There's, there's opportunity with some of this. And so I really I focused on sharpening my web design and web development skills at that time. Um, learned CSS, learned some PHP, learned some JavaScript, uh, started my own freelance studio, uh, found a few clients through some referrals and kind of was off to the races from there. Um, and within uh, kind of my first two years doing that, I had built uh, a product for a client uh, that was a web app for the original iPad. 
And I, it's funny, I, I just learned that that same client just turned off that product uh, a year ago. So 10 years, I think was a pretty good run for my first product. Um, and uh, that experience really kind of set the stage for what was going to come next. Um, so having the experience of, of consulting with a, a large variety of people, um, helping them solve problems and helping them bring something to market that uh, that they would use um, was was really a, a valuable process to discover. Um, and so shortly thereafter, I ended up joining a, a web development agency in Atlanta, uh, worked there for about five years. Um, and it was interesting, Diego, because my title at that organization was project manager. But I quickly realized that what I was doing was really not just project management. <clears throat> Um, I was doing a whole lot more than just kind of playing the traffic cop, right? And I found myself working with clients crafting product strategy and working on go-to-market decisions and writing and prioritizing user stories and figuring out market opportunities and, and trying to help people think holistically about the customer experience. Those are things that aren't really in the job description for a project manager. Um, and and uh, and in my time at that or at that uh, organization, uh, I helped lead uh, the design and release of several big products for clients like Cox Automotive, for example, um, AutoTrader.com, Kelly Blue Book. I realized during that time that what I was doing was actually product management and product strategy work, and and from there um, I I worked uh, as long as I was there at that agency. Let me back up a second. For the time that I was there, uh, I tried to help encourage the other project managers on the team to develop that skill set and to try and think about things through the lens of the user, uh, not just about ticking off the list of features that really was the mindset at the time. So then from there, uh, I, I had a very short stint at Newell Rubbermaid, um, working in their internal e-business um, uh, kind of an internal creative studio. And then I came over to Digital Scientist where I've been uh, for, again, almost the last five years. Um, at DS, I was the first product manager they ever hired. And I've built the product uh, management practice from the ground up. And so now we have uh, four full-time PMs. And uh, we've, we've really worked hard to build a practice that thinks deeply about the user's problems, about what it is that our customer is trying to do for their customers. And, and it's an interesting dichotomy for us because uh, being an agency, we're not just working with uh, our own users. And, and so we have to put ourselves into different shoes and empathize with a wide variety of people all the time. Um, and so there's a lot of context switching that's involved, um, but, and, and there's also a very large educational component to what we do uh, with our customers. <clears throat> That's a very fascinating story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And one thing that I think it's super important that you mention is you you came into product management not by starting something specific or not by even being deterministic about this is the exact you know set of skills that I want to develop. But as you were in this project management role and you discovered that it was not really project management, you started building those skills that slowly help you transition into product management. So I think it's it's awesome to see that evolution from so many yeah. different roles and how you're getting those skill sets. Uh, so, so thanks for sharing that story. Now, Absolutely. I'd like to transition a little bit more on to um, you know, your, your day-to-day -day work today. So uh, what is it like to work at Digital Scientist? What are you working on? Sure, so uh, it, it's interesting. My, my role has grown beyond from product management to managing product managers. And, and, and now I'm, I'm really um, in a position of helping our CEO sell new client relationships. I've spent a lot of my time uh, helping him run the organization. Uh, so I'm wearing a lot of different hats all the time, um, whether that's kind of helping our marketing team keep things moving on that front, uh, meeting with new clients, writing proposals and things like that. Um, so my, my life is really pretty busy these days, but it's, it's all very good. Um, for the typical product manager, I, I think their life is uh, honestly not that dissimilar from most product managers in, in an average software organization. And daily stand-ups and meetings with the team and uh, huddling with people virtually now, of course, uh, to, to whiteboard, 
uh, brainstorm, figure out what we're doing for a particular client, uh, whether that's putting together uh, an alignment workshop for them, uh, help working with a designer to sort out workflow diagrams and things of that nature, um, meeting with clients to review work, uh, et cetera. Um, so a lot of things that are, are very typical for the life of a product manager, certainly a lot of plate spinning. Um, there's always fires that need to be put out. Uh, fortunately, not too many dumpster fires, but occasionally <laughs> they happen, you know. Uh, but um, at, at Digital Scientists, our, our, our culture is very collaborative. So we try to make sure that design and product and engineering all have an equal voice at the table when we're working on a product. We pull our solution architect into, uh, a, into product strategy sessions a whole lot earlier than a lot of agencies might. Um, and so we, we wanna make sure that what we're designing can be built. <laughs> we rarely wanna design anything without a, an intention uh, of it going to market. That's awesome, man. I think a lot of, um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, products and a lot of teams actually fail to really do the proper analysis before launching something into the market. Um, but speaking Absolutely. about your day-to-day your -day life, and I know it's the answer, it's always going to be, it depends. But if you could kind of sum it up into just a few key points, what is your day-to-day, -day, uh, what does your day-to-day -day look like as a PM in this company? Sure. Day-to-day, um, -day, I, I would think, number one, it's, it's aligning the team, making sure that uh, Every member of the team understands what's expected. And, and that's a, a mixture of, of not just distributing tasks and making sure the sprint is planned, uh, but making sure that what people are doing aligns to the overall goal and the vision of, of the work. And so that, that, at least for us at Digital Scientists, is a constant process of reinforcement because it's very easy, uh, as you know, Diego, to, to begin in one place and learn new information and derail. Uh, <laughs> yes. Or just get pulled in a lot of different directions and, and forget what your North Star is. Uh, and so for, for, for PMs, we're, we're constantly trying to reinforce, why are we here? What is the, the mission or the vision, the objective that we're trying to accomplish here? Uh, and continually frame that to the team in a way that, that is understandable. We're not always perfect at it, but but we're certainly trying uh, to be consistent about that. Um, obviously, if we're managing a sprint, there's going to be a retrospective. So uh, putting together retrospective meetings and, and sessions with the team to understand what went well, what needs improvement, what are we never going to do again, or what are we gonna do more of? Um, that, the, that's a pretty regular occurrence uh, on our team. And then a, a PM could certainly expect to be uh, talking to a whole lot of different people all the time, whether that's a one-on-one -on -one session with a designer, a one-on-one -on -one session with a developer, or uh, hosting collaborative sessions with different people. Uh, and then certainly there's, there's meetings with our clients. And I think this is probably the hardest part uh, of the job of a product manager at Digital Scientists is to keep our team in alignment with the client team. It's hard enough to keep your own team in alignment with each other. It's even more difficult when you have to keep all of that together with a whole different group of people who honestly very often are not in alignment with themselves either. Um, and so that, that uh, in terms of just the skill of diplomacy for a product manager, I think is, is the hardest part about uh, what it is that we do. <clears throat> wow, that is, it's, I think it's a great combination of here's what a typical day-to-day -day would look like for any PM at any company, I would say, but also the very challenging part. So so thanks for grouping those together because I think a lot of people just um, have the idea that PMs, we, we run meetings, we talk to customers, and then we tell yeah. the team what to do. But there are so many other layers of complexity and challenges into the day-to-day -day of the PM. So that's, that's right. awesome to hear those two together. Yeah. Um, let me switch gears a little bit here. <clears throat> you know, I, I've been asked by by a few aspiring PMs if I know anybody who is a, a PM and who is introvert. 
And and from a few posts that, that I've seen on your LinkedIn, it caught my attention that you were talking about being an extroverted introvert. What does being an extroverted introvert means? It, it's such a good question. And it, it's a fascinating topic to explore. And, and uh, I was so glad that you reached out to talk about this, Diego, because uh, I definitely characterize myself as an introvert. Um, and I think Part of it, it comes back to understanding really what does it mean to be introverted, number one, and number two, what, what's an extrovert? Uh, it, and at least in, in my own process of self-discovery, I think it boils down to where one obtains their life energy, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so an extroverted person tends to thrive being around other people and thrives off of those interactions and is, is actually empowered by them. Um, whereas an introverted person uh, really uh, obtains far more of their energy when they have time to themselves and, and time to reflect and time uh, to enjoy calmness and quiet. When I talk about being an extroverted introvert, uh, I, I think you can develop the stereotype about an introvert that's kind of like, I'm, I'm going to sit in a dark room every day and I'm, the blinds are drawn and I, I, live it, I live in total darkness and I don't ever leave the house or see the sunshine or, or talk to other humans ever. Um, and so you can kind of create a, a caricature of that and, and that certainly extends to, to certain roles in, in the realm of, of software development, I think. Um, but, but for me, um, I have never had a problem getting on a stage and speaking to a group of people. And, and I think you find this a lot with, with actors, for example, um, who are otherwise very private and very quiet individuals. But when they're doing their, when they're, when they're practicing their craft, um, th there's no fear involved. So you and I are having this interview, for example, I'm, I'm fine, we're talking, I'm good. Uh, but I also know that when this meeting is done, I'll probably need to take a break before I get on my next call and, and recharge for a minute. Uh, because it definitely requires an expenditure of energy uh, on my part to, to have interactions with other people, particularly when performance is involved. Now, you see I've got a keyboard here and there's speakers by me and a microphone and, and just to my left, there's a, a drum set. I, performance, playing music in front of others. I really enjoy it. I love it. Uh, but it is something that, at least for me, is, can be very exhausting. So when you think of product managers, uh, it definitely is a role where a lot of person-to-person -person interaction is required or you in front of an audience of people. Um, I think the key there uh, as an introvert is to understand how to set boundaries for yourself in such a way that you can sustain your energy throughout each day so that you are not completely exhausted after your first phone call of the day because you're gonna have a whole lot more. Um, you have to have the, the, the will and the strength to influence other people. Alignment is something we talk about all the time as a product manager and if you can't align your team, you, the likelihood of success is very, very low, right? Um, and so I, I think, um, I think you have to find time for yourself. You have to find time to disconnect from the work and make sure that, that as an introvert, your life is full of the things that give you energy um, because you will expend it. Uh, in talking to other people. And, and I find that even more so during the pandemic lockdown to be an issue. It, it's one thing being in an office and being around other people all day, every day. I, I find that, that being on Zoom calls all day, every day can be just as exhausting, if not more exhausting for people. And there's even studies coming out showing the psychological impact of, of Zoom calls like this on, on people. Um, and so I think a lot of it is, is personal awareness to understand um, how these interactions affect a person and affect their energy level. Uh, and as a product manager, I think possessing self-awareness is job number one. You, you have to know what your limits and your boundaries are. 
And if I can extend that a little bit, that last thing that you mentioned, uh, what are the most challenging things about being an introverted PM? And, and does your team know or, or people around you know? And does that affect you in, in any way? Yeah, sure. So I, I think at times for me, there can be a sense of exhaustion or ir irritation. And, and sometimes I can let that slip a little bit, um, especially if I've had lots of meetings all day and it's at the, and somebody tries to schedule a meeting at the very end of the day. And I'm just like, really? Another one? Okay, <laughs> you're killing me. Uh, I, I try to encourage my team because we, two, of our, two of our product managers are, are pretty extroverted. Uh, the other is, is an introvert like I am. Um, and so try to be cognizant of the fact that most of the people on our product team our designers and developers are all introverts as well. And so when we're trying to create an environment where sustained productivity is encouraged, we have to be cognizant of the things that can be disruptive to it. Meetings, for example, can be hugely disruptive, particularly when you're trying to perform mental work in a sustained fashion at a high degree of productivity. Um, and so I think um, for me, knowing my limits, encouraging others to know their limits, being willing to say no, I'm not going to have another meeting at five o'clock on a Thursday afternoon is okay. It's okay. Um, I also try to, to create some standards where we're very particular about when and how we choose to create meetings. Does this require a whole hour? Does this require 30 whole minutes? Is this something we can do over Slack just by typing? Do we really have to stare at each other and talk about this? Um, or can, does it just require a five minute conversation? Um, and by the way, can we be prepared for the meeting as well? Um, don't just start, schedule a meeting because we wanna talk endlessly because we're, we're going to waste each other's time. I think the more tactical that you as an introvert can be with your time, the happier, healthier, and more productive you'll be. And I found that to be true for myself, so. <laughs> no, no, that, that's, that's great. And thank you for sharing that. And now on the other side of this, have there been any resources, anything in particular that has helped you on your day-to-day? -day? Um, anything at all, any apps, any tips, any, anything that you want to share? Totally. So there, there's a number of things that I, I found that have been very helpful. I was really struggling with this issue several years ago um, to the degree that I just, I found myself being so drained at the end of every day um, where I, I love the work and, and I love helping people uh, achieve great, great things. Uh, but the toll that it was taking on me uh, was, was not a good thing. Um, I read the book called Rework. It's from Jason Fried and David Hanemeyer Hansen, the Basecamp guys. Uh, that book and its follow-up uh, called It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work, which is awesome. Um, both of those books were really game changers for me. Uh, the first time I read Rework, it was like they were just speaking to my brain, uh, particularly in terms of understanding the value of time and understanding the importance of, of drawing boundaries and saying no and thinking tactically about your time and your team's time um, and trying to be very discerning about meetings in general. Um, those, those principles that I shared just a second ago about how I try to influence when and how and why we have meetings uh, totally were influenced uh, by, by their work um, and haven't fully successfully implemented all of their suggestions, um, but, but reading their work was definitely a breath of fresh air for, for my mind. And, and it was very helpful. Um, there's a podcast that I listened to uh, from Tim Ferriss, the Tim Ferriss show really uh, he offers a lot of very thoughtful, helpful reinforcement about time optimization um, about finding the right balance between work and life and play. And um, a lot of his, his shows can be more health oriented um, I, I think honestly, I, he, it's funny, he did a, an interview very recently with Jerry Seinfeld and it, it was incredibly helpful. And I've, I've recommended it to a lot of fellow product managers uh, who I know are introverted because it's, 
it's really talking about how to create simple structures around managing your time so that you can be uh, at your best and be your most efficient when you're practicing your craft um, without wearing yourself out to the point of exhaustion. Um, other things that I've found, Diego, to be very, very helpful are regular exercise. I have to exercise. Uh, the more I'm sitting down and staring at a computer screen, uh, I, I've just I've got to force myself to get up and go for a walk and get some sunshine uh, and some fresh air. And that especially helps when I'm trying to switch context. As an introvert and also someone with a little ADHD, um, context switching can be very difficult. And so if I've got a day where I have a lot of back-to-back -back conversations and meetings, which is very often, uh, I'll try to make sure I've got 10 or 15 minutes in between each discussion so I can go outside, stare at nature for a little while. Um, and that, that just helps kind of calm things down and, and recharge my, uh, my batteries, so to speak, uh, for the next conversation. Rob, thank you for sharing those tips. I, I learned so much. I'm definitely going to uh, go for that book and that podcast, and I should definitely walk more outside. So I'll also, <laughs> I'll also keep that in mind, I promise. Um, I have two last questions for you. One sure. is, do you have any recommendations, any advice, any tips for any introverts out there who want to become product managers, but they're a little bit afraid that because of all the conversations, all the meetings, they won't be able to? Yeah, I, first of all, don't be afraid. Um, some of the smartest, most capable product managers that I have ever met and have been deeply influenced by have certainly been introverted people. Uh, I think it, I, I've mentioned the word boundaries a lot in our conversation, Diego, and I, I think I can't emphasize that enough. Being willing and able to set reasonable boundaries for yourself about when you're going to work uh, when you're going to engage in meetings, when you're going to stop working. Uh, having those boundaries in place is invaluable to preserve your sanity and to make sure that, that you're able to perform at your very best. Uh, and certainly it's not going to be perfect, right? Uh, the boss could call at any time and, and demand your, your attention and, and that's fine. But to, to make sure that you're putting forth the effort to say, I am not going to run myself ragged. I am not going to allow my time to be completely governed by chaos. Um, as an introvert, it's, it's extremely important. Um, another thing I think that's very important for introverted people to, to realize is that it's okay to tell others that you need time for yourself. And, and I think for a certain type of introvert, particularly those that are more service minded, who are very empathetic and care deeply about others, that's very hard to do because you want to help other people. And you can sometimes do that to your own detriment. It's okay to say what you need and it's okay to own it. It's okay to say, I, I can't do that. I need to go sit in my dark room now and read a book. That's totally <laughs> fine. Uh, again, it's about reasonable boundaries for yourself. Um, and just lastly, there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. There's just not. You're, you're a person just like everyone else. And, uh, and our, our skills and our talents are, are invaluable. Thank you for sharing those tips. Uh, I hope everybody out there who's listening, who is an introvert, stops being afraid to of, of trying to become a product manager and, and just you know get things going and and do the best that they can uh, the last question that i have for you today is how can people find your podcast and what sure. is it about absolutely so uh the experience lab podcast it's uh the official podcast of digital scientists the company i work for uh you can find us uh on apple podcasts or spotify uh really anywhere your podcasts are are, are or anywhere podcasts are sold. Um, we, my, uh, our senior product manager, Jay Cosgrove and I are the, the co-hosts of the show. And what we try to do each week, or not each week, let me back up, cut. <clears throat> <laughs> what we try to do is uh, examine a different aspect of life at Digital Scientists, whether that's uh, machine learning and speaking with engineers on our team, 
uh, digging into our practice of product management. And when we examine a lot of different topics related to that, uh, we get into topics uh, that are relevant to others that are in the professional services realm. So we, we've talked about billing practices and, and different models for that. Um, and, and also trying to, to talk about how we approach uh, building products generally as an organization. Um, so we, we talk about a lot of different topical material and, and try to get to a reasonable level of depth um, with it. And so we, we've put out uh, 12 episodes in our first season. Our most recent episode just came out uh, yesterday actually. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited about moving on to season two uh, when we're going to do, open up with a, a three-part series on product strategy. And then we're going to do another three-part series walking our listeners through uh, our entire process of building a product, how to do it from, from conception to go to market. Uh, so we're really excited about our plans for that. That sounds really exciting. It will definitely have the link to all of that in the description. Rob, thank you so much for being with us today. I think uh, I learned so much. I'm sure everybody out there has learned uh, so much as well. So thank you so much for being with us today. It's my pleasure, Diego. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And for everybody else watching, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next time.